Tuesday morning, <clears throat> January 23rd, and it is still raining here in East Texas, but the blessing is it's uh, 60 degrees and it's not freezing rain, so we're thankful for that. Um, so we've been talking a lot about keeping our children and uh, Jude 1, 24, uh, to him who is able to keep us. And just this morning, praying over our children and uh, the other children that, that I'm involved with and training and discipling is keep our children out of the path of the destroyer. And Lord, I just pray right now, God, keep our children, the children in our household, the children that we have influence over, keep them out of the path of the destroyer. And so that's uh, Psalm 17, 4, I believe. And so just put that, put that weapon, put that arrow in your quiver um, so that you have that and pray that over your children, that, that, that God and the angels would keep them in the path of righteousness. And so we pray for them to have soft hearts today. We pray um, that they would have a tender heart, a heart of flesh, and not a heart of stone. Um, so anyway, that's, uh, that's something that we really have to contend for. Now, uh, this past week or a couple of weeks, uh, we've been talking about warfare, okay? And then we're going to get into a little bit of warfare strategies today. But some statements were made on Sunday that are, I think are very vital and very worth repeating. And that is uh, there are three things, three points that were stated that I just want to restate. And that was it's a time of war, okay? And our war is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in the uh, dark world, okay? And there is a demonic oppression that that we are responsible to break through, okay? The kingdom of uh, the kingdom of God suffereth violent and the violent take it by force. okay? Jesus did some things on the cross so that we could engage and participate with him in this battle. And it's up to us to put on the full armor. So we're in a warfare number two. Uh, we there's domains to be taken. So the the tough part about this is you got to fight. You got to as First Corinthians nine twenty five says for mastery you have to contend. Which that word mastery basically is like to agonize. Okay, so to, to get where Jesus went, he had to pray. He had to fast. He got, he went to that Garden of Gethsemane. He had to uh, sweat some drops of blood. And of course, we're not called to do what he did, but but in type and shadow, some of the similar things. He says, you know, the ma uh, the servant is not greater than the master. If I was persecuted, if they hated me, they're going to hate you too. And so uh, we don't carry his cross, but there is a cross. He says, carry your cross. Okay, so we all have a cross. Uh, we all have a denial of ourselves. We all have a cross to carry, and we all have... Um, take up your cross and we have a following and how we have to follow him in his footsteps. So uh, there is a war to fight in the spirit world. We've got to fight it. There is a domain to take. Okay. But the third thing is there is a prize to win. And the Bible says that if you come to God and you believe and you seek him and you, but you have to believe if you come to him, you have to believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek them. So God, give us diligence in this hour to chasten ourselves, to fast and pray, to seek your face, to turn from our wicked ways. You know, 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. Give us the diligence to do it. Now, another statement was made that I just feel like needs to be said again is from a prophet's perspective was said that if, if you don't fight in this hour, if you don't engage... Okay, and it could be very simple, it could be start off very small. If you don't say yes, if you don't jump in, if you don't take this seriously, it will definitely uh, could negatively or positively affect your health, your future, your your uh, your destiny. Okay, so this is there's a lot going on in the spirit world right now, and we have to fight for some things. We have to fight for an inheritance that God has given us. The, the, the beautiful news is all we have to do is say yes. All we have to do is jump in. If it starts out, it, you know, it's like working out. If you haven't been doing any and you need to jump in, five minutes could be a big deal. 
Okay, if, if, if it's five minutes, if it's 30 minutes, if it's an hour, but, but we need to start, okay? We got to engage. We got to apply ourselves and ask the Lord, Holy Spirit, hey, I need your help. And if he has your yes, and if he has your willingness, you know, my people, Psalms, I believe it's 103, of my people who are willing in the day of my power. So God, if, if you'll be willing and you'll be obedient to what he tells you to do, whatever that fast is, Okay, to some people, it might be a one-day fast, okay? It might be skipping one meal, okay, for somebody. For somebody else, it might be 21 days, okay? So, so whatever he's telling you to do, so my people will be willing and obedient. They will, they will inherit or reap the reward or, or, or get that part of the land, okay? So I encourage you with that. But today, one of the military strategies, um, and I have thought about, I've meditated on, I've read Mark chapter four, the parable of the sower. I've taught it. I've studied it. I've looked at it. I've heard other people talk about it, but it came to me kind of in a more of a, uh, the four stages of apostolic warfare. Okay. Today I saw it in a slightly different way. Okay. And that's the beauty of God's word. It's living and active, sharper than any two edged sword. Hebrews four twelve. You could read it a thousand times, you could think you had some type of understanding of it, and yet it's going to be more and more unraveled for the, for billions of years. Okay, you can't un you can't unpack it all. You can't memorize it all. You can't understand it all. God's word it's the bestseller. You know, I was laughing the other day at um, one of the game shows. They had most popular books. You know, and they had all these books. You know, and some are okay and some are pretty bad. And but the Bible. I mean, it's the most pop, it's the, it's the most sold, you know, most public, most copy sold. I mean, you know, gosh, we ought to talk about this and, and what a, there's no other book that does what the, what the word of God does. It's living, it's active. Okay. So I don't want to get ca too, too caught up off on that rabbit trail, but Mark chapter four, verse 15, four stages of apostolic warfare. Now, yesterday it was like, it was so beautiful because felt like this onslaught, like this word was given, this word of warfare and yay and encouragement and let's go do this. And so Monday comes and it's like, I'm not going to list all the things that came against us or, or these attacks that came opposite of the word. And I was like, wow, bang, bang. It was just, there, there was like one discouragement, one tough word, one uh, a negative thing, one uh, downer over after another on Monday. It was like, okay. And, and, and Sunday, Monday started off with such a powerful word and warfare. And so the Lord just reminded me of, of Mark chapter four, uh, verse 15, the four stages of abstract warfare. The word comes. Okay. So the first thing you got to remember, and some of y'all know this, like back of your hand, I understand it, but but I'm looking at it from a different perspective today. When the word comes, okay, in, in warfare, okay, if we're in a military campaign, we're fighting apostolic warfare, this is our career, okay, is to fight, you know, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers in, in, in the unseen world. When the word comes, who comes? Satan comes, okay? So, so this is something that we got to be aware of, okay? So when the word comes, Satan comes. Verse 15, Mark 4, 15, the, the sower sows the word on the, on the roadside, and the first strategy of warfare against us is Satan comes. He says uh, in the parable, it's the fowls of the air. They come to take the word, okay? So in its infancy, and you can see this played out, uh, today in the news, I'm, I'm watching, you know, uh, the abortion battle. So Satan, in the natural, he comes for the infant. He comes before that little child can even grow up, okay? So, I mean, so many times, uh, first of all, Satan will come to a, a non-believer. Uh, the, the word is sown, and then Satan just comes, and or, or you hear a sermon, you hear a message, and then the next day, it's gone. It's like, what did, what did we talk about? That's why we have to keep communicating our faith. That's why these are so important um, so that I can say it again. My, my, my children can hear it again. They can say it to me. I can say it to them. And then we can say it to you and you can say it back to us and we can communicate our faith because we have to keep this alive, what God is saying, or else the devil will take it. And, and the Bible says, 
Blessed is he who receives the word and keeps it. You know, when we were teaching kindergarten, we'd always say he receives the word and he keeps it. You got to keep it. You got to hold on to it, okay? Because the devil will come to take it. Or he'll come to say, did God really say that? Did God really tell you to do that? That doesn't sound, you know, did he tell you to fast? Man, you're pretty hungry right now. You might die if you, if you don't eat today <laughs> or, you know, whatever crazy thing he says. So the first thing he does, so if you know that in military strategy, he's coming to steal something from you. So, okay, I got to hang on to that. I got, okay, no, no, God did tell me to do that. Yeah, you know, God God did tell me to to do this or to do that. Just because I had an obstacle, just because there was a challenge, just because it was super discouraging, uh, just because it didn't seem like it worked. He said, Peter, throw your net on the other side of the boat. Okay, it's gonna, it's coming. You, you got to, perseverance, uh, persistence breaks the resistance, right? So the second thing in these stages of, of, of battle, of military battle, is uh, the stony ground, okay? So the sa Satan will bring, uh, you know, you receive the word, and the stony ground is there's no root, okay? So you receive the word, and what happens is because of the word, it, it's not stolen, but it, it's, it gets hard, affliction, persecution, Okay, and so you're tempted, uh, misunderstanding, uh, bad communication, uh, uh, affliction, persecution, made fun of, mocked, uh, doesn't work out, uh, didn't go the way you thought it was, disappointment, and then the person is offended. Okay, so the Bible says the righteous are not easily offended. So these are stages, you know. So okay, the word's coming. I got to meditate on it. I got to think about it. I got to. I got to keep it. I got to hold it. I got to keep it before me. And when Satan comes and says, did God really tell you to do that? You say, yes, he did. He did. You know, like do different than Adam and Eve did. Uh, did, did Satan, did God, did God really say don't eat from this tree? Yeah, he did. He did say that. And I don't understand it all, but I trust him. Okay. And so we got to, uh, like Jesus did in the wilderness, we've got to say, you know, it is written I and mean, put that word back in there we got to keep it the next thing we talked about is stone where you don't have a root so it gets to some hard times get to some hard situations uh you have to pay a price uh it's going to cost you something it's going to cost you maybe friends it's going to cost you money it's going to cost you uh discomfort it's going to cost you a little pain you know and uh so then they become offended and the bible says the righteous are not easily offended okay and uh, John the Baptist, you know, that he, he sent his disciples and he got his head cut off, okay? In Revelations, it says some will be beheaded, some will be saved, okay? So we got to settle up. I love Jesus no matter what happens, okay? Live or die. Uh, one of the three things to overcome is the blood of the lamb, the word of his testimony, and loving not our lives unto the death, okay? So God has a beautiful future for us, live or die, okay? And we have to settle up with loving God, more than anything else, you know, as you know, being his disciple. And so we got to prepare ourselves uh, with affliction, with persecution, forgiveness, blessing and not cursing, and all of these things. Okay, we got to shore ourselves up and pray God help us, especially in the end times. The third thing that that Satan uses to is to choke that word, the thorns, okay? And the thorns are three things. The cares of this world, okay, we get really busy caring for this world, and there is a legitimate care that we have to have, provide for our family. We, we have to, you know, get up. We have to eat. We have to provide for our family. We have to do certain things, but we can't let that, the, those cares consume us and choke out that word. Number one, the cares of this world. Number two, the deceitfulness of riches. And number three, the lust of other things. And what happens is we receive the word and then it's the bills and the job and the situations and the circumstances and the and everything just comes in and just before long, we're unfruitful, okay? And so that is a also, so we've got to be aware of these strategies, these, these counter, uh, counter measures that Satan uses in this military strategy. We talked... Uh, the last few weeks about some of the strategies about um, praying for our children. We talked about uh, our mouth being enlarged over our enemies, speaking the word, right? We talked about different ones. So here's just some apostolic strategies, some, some, um, some, some insight on things that the Satan will throw at us. These are same old tricks he's always used, but it's needed to, to, to talk about. These are apostolic strategies 
for successful warfare. Now, the fourth part you all know about is the good ground. And there's three things that we do in the good ground. We hear it. We receive it. Yes, Lord, I want to do that. And then we bring forth fruit. So fruit comes from obedience. Fruit comes from a dwelling in it, abiding in it, continuing in it, meditating on it, talking about it. All right, Lord. So from this week, last week, what you've told me to do, what did you tell me to do specifically? And what am I doing about it? How am I putting feet to what you said to do? Because we cannot be just a hearer only, okay? But we've got to be a doer. What are we doing? Faith without works is dead. Faith, or you could say it like this, faith without works is unfruitful, okay? And so we want to be fruit producers. And I believe in God that this is a season, even though it seems really tough right now, it's like anything else, like boot camp, it's like football two-a-days, it's like basketball, getting ready for the season, it's like military preparation, it's like, you know, your diet, your exercise, everything is on point, okay? And so you're getting ready for a successful season to win that championship, to win that trophy, to win that cup, uh, to win that prize, whatever it is, but, but the world is doing it we're doing it just like the world, but they're doing it for a uh, corruptible prize. We're doing it for incorruptible prize, okay? And so what's interesting is we hear the word, we receive the word, and we bring forth fruit. Then what's crazy is, okay, if you were going to do this by stats, by statistics, the, the Lord is saying that, I mean, if, if, it, if it went strictly by statistics on this verse and this parable, tw only 25% of people who hear the word are going to be bearing fruit. Now that is, that's kind of scary. Okay. But Jesus said, enter into the narrow road. Okay. Which leads to life. He says, few find it. Okay. That's another scary verse. But if you were to go through this, this, this parable statistically, that means 25%, only 25% of people are going to hear God's word, receive it, and actually do it and bear fruit. Now, the scarier thing, it could be scary, it could be super exciting because because this could make this could stimulate you, motivate you, uh, ignite you, uh, uh, give you righteous indignation. Like I'm not going to be that 75%. Now, here's another thing to to excite you, okay? Now, he said that out of that 25%, not everybody is going to be is going to be activated at 100%. He said 30, 60, 100 fold. Okay, so out of the 25% that are going to bear fruit, 33% or a third, okay, are going to optimize and be at the top of their game for Christ, which means uh, getting everything Jesus paid for out of them for him. Okay, and you go back to the parable of the talents. He gave some one, he gave some two, he gave some five. All right, and he measured their reward not on how much he gave them. Okay, God does not give everybody the same amount of talents. Okay, is that you know, we, we preach equality, 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 but we all, you know, that's not actually reality. God gives us all different abilities, talents. I mean, but he doesn't measure us all equal. He measures us based on how we, um, how we invested in the talent or quality or whatever it was. To whom much is given, much is required. So it's, it's based on all these different things. And so out of those 25%, a third of the 25% is going to bear maximum, maximum potential. Now, man... So that means, let's say, let's take 100 people, okay? You just take 100 people, all right? Out of that 100 people, 25 of those people are going to bear fruit for Christ. And out of those 25 people, only 8 out of 100, 8 out of 100 people are going to bear maximum 100% full potential. Now, that's just the thought I had this morning. I want to be one of those 8, okay? You got, you got 5,000 that are going to bear a certain amount. You're going to have uh, 70. They're going to bear a certain amount. You're going to have 12. They're going to bear a certain amount of fruit. And you're going to have three. And then you're going to have John the Beloved. Okay. And Paul said, I have fought the fight. 
I have run the race. I have finished the course, 100%, 100%. And so that's what I'm asking God for, for me, for you, is optimization. Optimize spirit, soul, and body. Keep us, God, keep our spirit whole, keep our soul whole, keep our body whole, Father, and optimize us and get us into full capacity to where we are bearing fruit. God, help us, Lord. Give us energy. Give us strength. Get, uh, convict. Bring us understanding. Bring us the people. Give us the ears to listen. Give us the eyes to see. Help us pay attention. Help us see when you're talking, when, when something is really important that doesn't look important to the world. Help us to see it with clear eyes. So I just uh, thank, thank you for uh, being with me today. Enjoyed you guys. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.